Hey everyone, I'm Liam. Today we're going to be showing you how to create this LUT filter using Spark AR. So let's get to it. Hey everyone, so today we're going to be creating our own Instagram LUT filter. We'll publish this to Facebook as well. And um, what you're going to need is Photoshop and Spark AR. You can do this in other photo editing apps, but we're going to be using Photoshop today. So we're going to be taking inspiration from these old film negative styles um, and we're going to probably go with the more sepia one here. So we're going to create a frame. Now this will be in the files in the link in the description and we'll also be aiming to get close to the colouring of the film as well. So let's jump into Photoshop and we'll start creating our LUT. Okay, so let's jump in. We're going to go to Film 400 and our Assets folder and we're going to open Test Picks. Now this isn't working, thanks iCloud. Okay, so we'll use this one from before. So what we've got here is uh, various different photos, shots in, shots in different types of light. Um, so we can see what our filter looks like in different lights. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a adjustment layer over the top of this. Um, so we'll go for hue saturation first, I think. Uh, adjustment layers are great because they allow you to edit your photo non-destructively and they're also what we use to create our LUT to export. So what we're going to do is we'll move the hue down a bit, make it a bit bluer I think. And then also bump the saturation up. Yeah, let's take the saturation up a bit. Right, um, I think the reds are a bit harsh. So we'll take those down a bit, take the saturation on the reds down a bit. Cool. And then we will bump the saturation up on the blues. Great. Yeah. Cool. Now what you can do with these is you can add another layer in over the top. So we're going to add in a photo filter layer. Now Photoshop has lots of different photo filters so up there we're using the warming filter number 85 um, this gives us a really sort of quick way to do really nice sort of vintagey sepia toned warm film look stuff so we'll do that and then what we'll do now i think is we'll add in another adjustment layer over the top of that and this one will be uh, curves now curves you can use like levels um but they sort of show you the histogram curves of everything and we'll take the lows down and bump up the mids and that's a bit bright so we'll take the highlights down a bit as well I think perfect cool and now I think we will add in another layer for levels yeah let's do levels as well so we can see levels right perfect Okay, so what we really want is we want that sort of faded film look. So you can get this through levels or through curves, really. It's up to you. But I think what we'll probably do is um, bump up the output levels. So we'll bring the darks up a bit. Yeah, that's nice. Nice and faded. And then we'll take the edge off the highlights as well, just so it's a bit more in the middle. There we go. Right, so we have our... Um, yeah, about there. Cool. So we have our four adjustment layers there. Now these are what build our color lookup table. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and export this now. So we're going to export and then near the bottom color lookup tables. Perfect. Right. So what we're going to do is we want to rename this as Film 400. The name of our filter. Uh, you can also add in copyright if you want. And we're going to save this as a cube. Perfect. Right, and let's add this into our assets folder for the project. Perfect. Right, and rename this as well. Film 400. There we go. Okay, so this bit's done. What we're going to do now is we're going to open up the uh, neutral LUT. Um, so all of the files for this will be in the description, so make sure you download those. Then you don't really need Photoshop. So this is our neutral LUT. This is what Spark understands. So we're going to add in another adjustment layer table. And then, sorry, this will be a color lookup table we'll add for this one. So the LUT you just made, we're going to load in as a 3D LUT. There we go. Assets, Film 400 Cube, what we just made. Perfect. 
and add that in over the top and there you go that's basically it we're gonna save this now as a PNG because um, Spark needs PNGs that can't understand layered files so we'll add this as film 400 PNG there we go and that's your first LUT so we'll add this into Spark now hey guys thanks for watching if you're getting anything valuable out of this video it would be a real help to me if you'd hit the like and subscribe button and then I can make more of these for you right so we'll start and create a blank project and make this bigger first thing we're going to do is we are going to save this so we'll save this and We'll put that in a folder called versions and call it film 400 and then what we're going to do first is we're going to import our green animation. Now this is in the files from the download. Uh, that link's in the description so make sure you grab these because we're not covering how to make this one today. So import all the frames here and this is too big so the current size is 6 meg so we need to do a texture reduction. So we'll do this and first thing we'll do is we'll get rid of transparency. Um, and then we'll let's take this, we'll bump the quality right up. Uh, yeah, just put it as high as it goes for now because we'll change it in Spark. So we're going to go to textures, click on the animation you've just imported, and we're going to change this um, texture compression settings. So we want to go to manual, change it to JPEG, to maximum resolution, highest quality, and method best. Um, and then do this for iOS, Android, and older Android. Now, with non-transparent assets, this is the best compression we can really get in Spark at the moment. So, right, that one's done. Um, and that has been imported on a plane, so we'll get rid of that plane. Um, delete that off, and we will import the rest of our assets. So all the stuff we made before, so the LUT and the blur layer and the mask top layer from the download file. Um, like I say, links in the description, so make sure you grab all that. Okay, so what we're going to do is, we'll not add in a color LUT just yet, but we will get our camera texture. So, yep, grab the camera texture from the texture extraction. And then we will add in a material. Um, change the name of this first to our animation. And then we will put in a mask layer, a mask blur layer, I think. So mask blur layer, and then another material, we'll do a mask top layer. Perfect. Right, and then what we're going to do is we'll go to our scene inspector and we'll add in a rectangle and this will be added in under a canvas so you don't need to worry about that. So we'll change the name of this to animation layer and then we'll do another one for mask blur layer and then a third layer which will be the mask top layer which will sit on top of everything else. Right, so that's our scene set up for now. We'll fill the width and then we'll fill the height. So that fills the full screen. And then what we'll do is we'll go to animation and that's our animation already added in there. And we will multiply that um, in the blend mode. And then we'll go to mask blur layer, change this to flat and then select blur layer same with mask top layer change it to flat add in mask top layer there we go and then we'll add our corresponding materials into our corresponding planes rectangles blur layer and animation layer and there you go we are 80 percent done but I think that grain animation is a bit heavy, so we should probably just knock that back a bit. To, no, maybe not eight, maybe 80, yeah. And then it's gone a bit quick, so put that down at 18. Uh, we'll randomize it so it's not the same every time, but still a bit fast. 14's a bit slow, 16 will do, perfect. 
Right, so that's our animation done. And there's our LUT. This is the one we did in Photoshop just now. So we'll go back here and we can import it as a color LUT. So we can do it this way. Um, and we'll get the patch editor up. There we go. Right, so this is the patch editor. But uh, you can also go to camera, sorry, device, and then just add in a color LUT from there. Um, and it'll do it for you and it'll basically add it in over the top um, and there we're pretty much done you can change the intensity here perfect um, yeah so that is your filter basically done now uh, you can sort of take the mask layers off if you want if you just want the texture itself um, and what we can do is we'll need to add in an experience before we can publish this. So add in an experience and go to sharing experience. Uh, and we'll go for camera and existing media. So that means that when people upload videos, they can add in your filter over the top of it as well. Uh, so we'll go to test on device. And if you are logged into your Instagram account on your device with the same account that you logged into Spark AR with, it will send a notification to Instagram and you'll be able to test your filter in Instagram and I always suggest you do this because you always find problems so we'll send that there but that's probably gonna take a while so we will export oh, save it first of course um, and we will publish it and then we'll go to you can publish a new effect from here but I like to export it and I'm gonna show you how to do it this way so we'll export the film 400 file so film 400 export and there we are. That's the file we're going to upload to Spark AR Hub and for publishing. Oh, done it the wrong way. Um, let's save this to the right file. So we'll publish, export, desktop. Yep, there we go. Versions. We'll stick it in here and we'll call it Film 400 Export. Great. Now that is the file we're going to need to upload to the hub and this is what Instagram will publish for you. So let's go to Spark AR Hub. Publish effect. Let's name it Film 400. And then that export file goes there. So we'll go back to our folder, Film 400 export, and hit upload. Now you can publish to all platforms, or specific platforms only, up to you. Uh, if you want it to go further on Facebook, get it under 2 meg, but we don't really need to worry about that now. Uh, so let's go and select some categories. So let's go for appearance, uh, color and light, camera styles, and moods. Let's go with moods. Right, and then keywords, this will help it in search. So we'll call it Film 400, tutorial, which is what we're doing now, um, film vintage and retro cool and then we need to upload a an example video of us using our filter all right so we'll go to upload and go into our files um, so film a little video save it send it to your computer and then we can upload from here so upload that and then we're going to upload a little thumbnail icon image uh, Cool, so we will upload the icon. I'll leave the icon in the files as well, so we'll just add that as our icon. Um, film 400, nice little retro film icon. Perfect, and then you pick your video thumbnail. So this is what people will see when they go onto the effects tab on your Instagram profile. So pick your nicest smile. There we go, cute guy. Um, yep. You can scan all the way through, so it'll sort of like pull frames from your video and you choose the one you want to use. Right, and then you can choose to publish it as soon as possible. You just hit the submit button um, and then that will submit to Spark AR. Uh, it'll go through a review process, which will take sort of, in my experience, just a few hours now. It used to be up to 10 days. Uh, and then that'll go live on your profile and you'll be able to use it. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you got any value from this video, if you could hit the like and subscribe button down below, that would be really helpful to me and the channel. Um, if you've got any questions about anything we covered today, leave them in the comment section. I'll try and answer them there. Otherwise, you can reach out to me on Twitter or on Instagram. Uh, links are in the channel description and I'll leave them down below the video as well. Other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.